John Bollinger with Premier Guitar. Today we're taking a first look at the brand new Gibson Falcon series. Now this is a, Gibson was one of the first guitar amplifier manufacturers in the world and it's great that they got back to it with the help of Randall Smith from Boogie. So it's a um, designed by, by this renowned amp uh, builder along with the Mesa Boogie team and out for you today. There's two versions. There is the 5 watt Falcon with the 10 inch and the 15 water with the uh, 12 inch speaker. And we'll get it back, we'll get into both of them after you take a minute to subscribe below. That way we can keep you up to date on all the cool gear that's out there. So here's how we're recording it. I'm gonna try three different guitars. This is a 2020 uh, Les Paul, basically stock. I'm going to use my old Music City Les Paul so you can hear what it sounds like with um, mini humbuckers. And then an old 1954 Switchmaster so you can hear P90s. And right now I'm running straight into the amp, but I want to try an overdrive and a delay later on so you can hear it. Recording with the Shure SM57, which is in going to a UA Apollo 8 and then into Apogee. And out to you all. So let's get into it a little bit. Um, I'm in this little five water it's what i love about this amp it's a you can't have a more pure signal flow than this all you have is volume tone reverb and then you have up here a switch that goes between full power and low power uh so even although it's a five water it's a loud five watts so i'm on the the low watt right now which i believe is one watt but it's, it's loud. Um, uh, and right now, coming in, I had the volume goosed to, I'd say about, about eight, and the treble up toned a little bit up to at about, oh, about noon and a half, about 12.10, I guess, if it was a clock, uh, with a little bit of verb in there. And what I love about a little amp like this, you could hear it just coming so alive with that feedback, and you you know, there might be other ways to get it, but man, that is just the purest, most kind of inspiring way, I think. You, know, you can hit a note and just touch your guitar head to it, and then you're in it. You know, you can go Neil Young all day long like that. But let me go it down to a more reasonable volume and put it on full okay so here we are with the uh with the amp oh at about i guess 
we'll say number four. <laughs> Just a great straight ahead tube amp tone. Um, and I think originally the Skylark, if I've got this right, there's also a, uh, a Skylark, Gibson Skylark lap steel that I think was often sold with this. And one of the things that drove the engineers crazy back in the day was trying to get that distortion out of it because they wanted that pure tone, kind of like you are, got right now. But of course, players learned that when you cranked it up and got into that, overdriving it really took off it's just so fun to play particularly with those lap steels you know a lap steel through this uh is just an awesome feeling so let me get it over into that that muddiness again cranked up a little bit on the lower wattage so <laughs> Lively, right? So uh, this uh, this thing again. That's I'm switching between full wattage and and uh, and low wattage. But for a five water, I, God, I think you could probably play a little club with it if you weren't super loud. Now, like most small watt amps, once you get above, say, uh, noon on it, it does get a lot louder. It just kind of gets more angry. But on full watt. When you're on full wattage and you've got the, you get quite a bit of volume out of it. Just a great tone, uh, but kind of perfect for me. This is the perfect application for recording because you can get that sound without without being too deafening, but would work in a live situation as well. Okay, so I love that guy, but let's get into its big brother. Okay, so now we're plugged in to the big brother, the uh, Gibson Falcon 20, which was inspired by the Gibson Falcon GA19RV2, I believe which now those amps are really expensive and hard to find. Kind of a sleeper in the vintage market, but again, people are catching on. So it's great they've issued this, but they've, I think they've made some huge improvements. First of all, it's got an attenuator built in, which will go from full power to half power to low power, low power being one watt. So you can still get that kind of, um, feedback inspired out of controlness of the little guy in a bigger package. And whereas this one has a 10-inch Jensen Blackbird Alnico speaker, this has the 12-inch um, Jensen Alnico. And I, I like 12s a little bit better. I just, to me, they just, to my taste, I just prefer that sound. So that's very cool. And they have a fabulous tremolo. <laughs> Just rich, right? And they come with a pedal here that allows you to turn the treble and the reverb on and off with your feet. So that's, that's, love that. It's my favorite effect. So uh, why don't we just play a little bit on this, see what it does. The controls again are as simple as this one. You have volume, tone, and reverb, but this has depth and uh, frequency as well for the tremolo. And then you have the uh, attenuation up top. So why don't we just start where we are on this clean setting. 
And right now I'm on full power. So a really good bass tone. But this one takes pedals really well. Let me put an overdrive on there and a little bit of delay. Go out and have a bite, still ringing. So for people that tend to play live and get their overdrive from their pedals, works great like that. However, if you kick it down, that's on full power, but if you kick it down to that low power setting, you're, then you're in the same boat as this guy. Great, right? Now let's try another guitar. Okay, so this is my Music City Les Paul with mini humbuckers in it. Now I'm on, still on low power. <laughs> Take it to medium and uh, love that. I think. The thing that I'm hearing that I, that I prefer the most is that 12 inch speaker. They just sound a little bit, I don't know, bigger. Whatever it is, it works for my thing. Now at full power, I'm gonna bring, it's gonna be. So I've got in my arsenal back there, I've got a 64 Deluxe, and this is louder than that amp. Um, it's, it's pretty dang loud. Definitely, um, you'd get lost in a really loud band. If it's a really loud band, a drummer would probably drown you out. But for most work, particularly if you're micing it, you'd be, you'd be fine on a, on, a, um, on a gig with this, playing with a band. And Plenty loud enough. Now let me take it down to a more reasonable level. You kind of hear this rich verb. Let me crank it up a little bit more.
So, I mean, that is a kind of a sweet do-it-all amp, and I love that old-school aesthetic. I love that vintagey tone, but I love the fact that it's got these updates like the like the uh, attenuation um, that make it just so much more practical for, for modern players. So good on you, Gibson. Very impressed by it. Uh, to read the full written review, go to premierguitar.com. While you're online, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Instagram, Twitter, all that social media crap. Subscribe to the magazine. It will keep you up to date on all the cool new gear that's out there. So for this last song, I'm going to go play out with this old Switchmaster. So here we are on my 54 Switchmaster. So let's hear what it sounds like with the 70-year-old P90s. <laughs> 